My goal tonight is pretty simple. I want to help one of you become a better public speaker and whatever that means for you. Because when you think about public speaking, what's really great about public speaking is that it's at the root of everything, right? If you want to raise, you need to be able to communicate your value. If you want a new job, you need to be able to communicate your value. If you want to start a business, you need to be able to communicate your value. By the way, how many people here want to start their own business? Uh, okay, so like half of you, that's interesting. It's usually way less, that's cool. How many of you um, are cool to go work under someone for a little while and see how that feels? Okay, see so the other half, you guys are actually all participating, this is amazing. Um, and no matter what, you have to be able to tell a story. Right, no matter what you want, either if it's you're starting a business or you want to move up the corporate ladder or you want to get that job, it really all comes down to why should I hire you or why should I buy from you, right? So that, that's for me what's fun about storytelling. Um, quickly about me, because I really do want to get into, how many, by show of hands, how many people here have no idea who I am? How many people here have some idea of who I am? All right, cool. So. For the people that have no idea who I am, I run a digital media branding and communications agency here in New York City, and we have just opened a New York City office. We also have a team down in Columbia. And what we do basically is we work with big, huge tech company, the big, huge corporation, and we help them basically tell their story. So maybe they've gone through a leadership change and they want the new CEO or the new CMO or the new C whatever O to be able to talk about the company in an exciting way. Or maybe they're coming out with a new product or a service and they don't exactly know how to talk about that product or service. So they hire us and we come in and we do that work for them. We've worked with companies like Twitter, with LinkedIn, Citibank, Credit Karma, uh, Salesforce, Intel, a lot of big companies um, to help them figure out how do we tell a story in the best way possible for the end goal. The second group of people I worked with is startup companies and you guys, you guys all know what a startup is, right? Anyone not know what a startup is? And if you don't, please don't be shy. When, when I say some benefits to being a good public speaker are, what is the words that follow? Body language, confidence, something, body language, confidence. You say confidence? Opportunities. I, okay, eye contact. What, what are some benefits of public speaking? Being a good public speaker will lead me to more opportunities, money, what else? Money, what else? Money, what else? <laughs> money? Who said money? What? Pe people knowing about what you do. What did you say next to you? What was it? People. Yep, what else? One more. What? What? Networking. What did you, who said, who said something? I said love. Love. Aww. <laughs> Guys. Take advantage of him. Um, so, so exactly. So these are all good things. Um, what is the biggest reason that you guys and gals think that what is preventing you from being extraordinary, really over the top, amazing, insanely good public speakers? Okay. People, so fear of judgment. What else? Fear of rejection. What else? Nerves, round two. Um, <laughs> yep. Yep. Hey, what else? Oh, I just heard you breathe deeply. Oh. <laughs> I thought you had like a really good one. Like, <gasps> uh, okay, what else, my man? Self doubt. Self doubt. Good. So, yep. Not getting your point across, boring the audience, boring the public, not being smart, not being accepted, not being liked. Like it's all right that you hate the public speak, right? So go into it thinking that, right? Um, that's it. Nice to meet you guys. I'm just kidding. I am selling something that is different, that's what on the market. People may not believe in it, they may think it's too radical. What should I do? How do you know people don't like, for, like, be careful of generalizing. That's number one. There's 7.7 .7 billion people in the world. I'm pretty sure you haven't talked to every single one of them. So people don't want that is usually what somebody says 
that has talked to five or six or seven or eight or 10 or 100 people that didn't want it, but that's not enough to know if people don't want it, right? So the first thing I would say is like, where are you? Where are your, your realizations coming from? Like, where is that truth coming from for you? How do you know that people don't want it? Have you talked to like, yeah, three. So you're missing like 7.69 billion, right? I'm super happy you're asking this question because it's really important because people are gonna tell you, like, you, you know how many times people, something, you know how many times people tell me no? I get rejected 99% of my day, right? But that doesn't mean people don't want it. So there's a couple of different things. The first thing is, what are you doing to, to try to advertise this product? Storytelling. But what are you, like, what, I'm actually asking, like, what are you actually doing right now to try to sell this product? Where? Um, just at events. Okay, so here's something that I would suggest to you if you have a little bit of extra money. If you have um, the product, I would actually create a 30 to 60 to 120 second video of you talking about why this product is so special, turning that into a video, putting that on Facebook, and advertising to people. I would find similar prints, because like, I'm sure you're not the only one doing this. Even if it's unique, I would find, so if it's an embroidered print, plus, a, what was the other one? Indigenous print. So what I would do is I would go on Facebook and I would try to find all of the groups. Like you can literally do this guys, like you can put up your, your scarf, let's say, right? With the story of your scarf. You can run Facebook advertisement against people that are following pages of your competitor. Yeah. So. If, I, if she and she and she and she all sell something similar to what you're selling, I can now put my video up there. Maybe, it's, maybe they're all the same, but mine is something like theirs, but different. Now I can put my video up there and I can run Facebook ads and get in front of her audience and her audience and her audience and her audience, but mine's a little bit different. And so now I'm siphoning the attention of her, their audiences because what do you know about their audiences? They like this kind of stuff. How do you make a great speech? When you're giving a speech, it's basically like, when people are in an audience listening to your speech, it's basically like you are orating a book to them, right? When you read a book and some, or when you go to a movie, what is the question that your friends ask you at the end of the movie? Did you like it? And then what? What was it about? What else? What? What was your favorite part? So the truth of the matter is this. What's your name? Saoyun. The truth of the matter is this, Saoyun. You're lucky. Like, you did a real good job if people can remember one thing from your talk straight up, right? Like when you leave a talk, it's like, yo, that guy, I loved what he said about, did you hear that line that he said that was like, and so your goal is not to remember every single joke and deliver every single part because the truth of the matter is, you're lucky if people are listening for 10% of your speech. So what I would say is this, two things. Number one, I love public speaking, love it, love it. But there are times where I freeze up and I'm like, fuck, what was I gonna say? So what I do is this, I do two things. Number one, I always have a signature story, a story that I know inside and out about my life. And that signature story kind of always changes depending on the audience, right? So if I'm speaking at an entrepreneurship conference, there's a signature story that I tell, which I'll tell you guys right now, which is when I first started my business, so many times, that I had to literally Airbnb my apartment in San Francisco. You know what Airbnb is? I Airbnb'd my apartment in San Francisco. I used that money to invest, to pay my rent and invest in the, the food for the week and month. And then I would go and sleep on my friend's couches in San Francisco. And one time this guy shows up and he's got a suitcase and he's like, hey man, and I was like, hey, and I have my suitcase, you know? And he's like, bro, like, where are you going? And I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I'm just like south, going down south. 
you know? And, and he's like, he's like, he's like, oh, sweet man, like San Diego, Los Angeles, Mexico. And I was like, yo, bro, like you see that house like right there, like two blocks south? I'm going right there. And he's like, what? So that's my story. If at any time I freeze up, I can go to that story because I know it inside and out and I'm so comfortable telling it that by the time I'm done with that story, see what just happened? Everyone laughed. I'm like chill. I'm like relaxed again. So the point of that story is sometimes you have to make sacrifices as an entrepreneur. And today I'm going to talk, you see what I'm saying? So have a story that's yours that you know inside and out, no matter how nervous you are, you can give that story. That's number one. Number two, I think that having some main key points is fine. Write it down on a note card and have your one, two, three, four points written down on a note card. And then if you ever freeze up, you know what you say? Here's what you say. You say, guys, I'm so nervous. I really don't like public speaking. And you know what's gonna happen? People are gonna clap for you because no one else in that audience likes it either. And they're gonna be like, yep. I feel you, girl. I hate that shit. There's nothing, and I mean nothing wrong with being real. Like, oh my God, yo guys, I, I straight up forgot what I was about to say. Hold on, let me get my note card out. Oh, right, so, and then you're just into it. No shame in that. How do I sell myself as an undergrad student to a company as someone they want to hire? First thing I would say is like, try to figure out who makes that decision and then try to figure out who you know or who you know that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that knows who makes that decision. That's just always the best thing. Like human beings vouching for you is always 100% the best thing. So if you can do that, that would be ideal. And by the way, think about that very abstractly. Like. That doesn't mean I go on my LinkedIn, I type in John's name who makes the hiring calls. I have no connections in common with John. And I'm like, huh, eh, nothing, I don't know. I don't have no connections, right? It's like, oh, this is actually super important. You figure out what John, John Smith is the hiring manager at Novartis Pharmaceuticals for the lab team. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go onto Twitter, into Instagram, into Facebook, and I'm gonna find John Smith. And I'm gonna learn everything about John Smith's life. Everything. All right guys, awesome night, super engaging group, lots of fun, lots of great questions. Totally, they're thinking about marketing, branding themselves, telling their stories in the 2017 world. It's a lot of fun. Always love being with the intern group. See you next time.